Come one and come all to hear the tale that started it all, a tale of such magnificence that other holiday stories can't compare to it. During a time of cold and dismay, Saint Nicholas was the one that saved the day. Now let's hear our two heroes experience the holiday joy. Alfred, what does Christmas even mean if my parents are dead? Well, Master Wayne, uh, call me Batman. I'm part bat, part man. All right. Well, Batman, Christmas is about holiday spirit, loving those around you and sharing some holiday cheer. Love. I don't know love. I love my parents, and they're dead. I loved Rachel. Rachel, she's dead. I loved my cat, Mr. Puggins. And then I forgot to feed him because of justice. And now he's dead. You do have a habit of killing a lot of people. I don't kill. It's against the rules. I don't ever kill. Nonsense. You killed that man the other day for jaywalking. You broke his back, severed his spinal cord, and ruptured his liver. Oh, yeah. That fills me with holiday cheer. Bringing justice to those that don't fear it. That don't fear me. Well... That's not quite it, but okay. Let me distract you, though, Master. Br well, well, I mean, Batman. It's Christmas Eve. Let's hear the original story of Christmas, Saint Nicholas. Welcome to History Out of the Box podcast. I am your friendly neighborhood Cam, all festive and cheery. And I'm Jen, all festive and cheery, with a uh, what I'm calling the the like. Eastern European uh, mob wife hat. Yeah, that works. Or maybe Park City, which yeah. is about as far away from Eastern Europe as you can get. But it's very warm. Yeah, totally. Anyway, welcome to the 20th episode of History Out of the Box. I believe we are still the only podcast that connects our listeners with the ghost of their collective past. I would agree. The we, only one. Where have we been? What have we been doing? We've been doing a lot. We've been traveling a lot. I'm, yeah. Enough to where we got home and I literally don't want to go do anything. No Christmas mm -hmm. parties, even though I'm going to a Christmas party tonight. Yeah. But I just want to sleep in my own bed, mm -hmm. sit on my own couch, eat my own food. You know, you don't realize, you, you know, you always want to go out to eat and have like a nice, nice meal. And then you start doing it a lot when you're on like vacations. And the last thing you just want to go home and make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich mm -hmm. and eat in peace. Yeah. But Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy, holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy uh, Kwanzaa. If people still do that. Uh, all the holidays. If you believe or don't believe, happy Christmas, Merry Holidays, whatever you want to say to all of you and everyone. <laughs> I do not discriminate unless you don't believe. Just kidding. I do. Santa. I, I do not discriminate. I don't discriminate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Clarification. Clear. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to, in the spirit of Christmas, sort of come back after a couple weeks off and choose Jolly Old St. Nicholas, which would transfer to what we would call today Santa Claus. But who is the man who inspired Santa Claus? Was he just a big, jolly, large man who lives in the North Pole on uh, the ice caps and hangs out with the Coca-Cola polar bears? And his wife and all the elves that they enslaved. That's right. We forgot. Oh, yeah. Oh, hot take. Mm. There we go. Uh, no, St. Nicholas was a Christian bishop who hmm. lived in the 4th century in the town of Myra in modern-day Turkey. He was known for his generosity, his love for children, his love for uh, people around him, 
and the legends surrounding his life have inspired the modern day figure of Santa Claus. Interesting. Yes. So no, it was not just a man who was a toy factory mm. a la Willy Wonka. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. St. Nicholas was born and lived during a very turbulent time in history when Rome was the ruling dynasty. And little is known about his historical life as none of the actual writings were preserved writings by him. Mm. So this is an interesting one because his earliest mentions are after he died in the sixth century. So long after his death, but most experts and historians agree that he was likely a very real person. And there is also mention of St. Nicholas's tomb being a place that people could visit at the time in the sixth century and even today. Huh. But we'll get into that. There's some complicated things around this man's body or what's supposed to be his body, his remains, his relics, his bones. There's a lot. Interesting. Yes. And... Uh, it may not sound very Christmassy now, but here's something you could talk about with your family over a, a what would it be like a Christmas what would you, dinner? A, a, no, I was gonna say like a Christmas breakfast. Christmas breakfast. Yeah. You start your day off with this. Yeah. You uh, know, wow. You really start out. Let's talk about the bones of Saint Nicholas. So there's this dead guy, and uh, he was a saint. And that's how Christmas came about. Right. Well, historians are torn over how much of his life was actual historical fact. Mm. And what we know now is just stories and legends or extremely embellished stories that may have been true, but little details tacked on. So for that reason, I will advise our listeners and viewers to proceed with that in mind. And unfortunately, it is very unlikely if we will ever really know the definitive truth of St. Nicholas's life. And uh, we only know of his legacy over 2,000 years later, or almost 2,000 years later. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think that that is very similar to another character. This might be sacrilege. Sounds like Jesus a little bit. There are some interesting correlations with the man in historical context known as Jesus mm. and the man in historical context known as St. Nicholas. I think we Saint need Christmas music. We need some? St. Nicholas was also, he's a very religious figure in the, in the, um, in the church. So I will proceed very nicely as not to offend. Yes. Okay. Now that is are very you really interesting. Ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. St. Nicholas of Myra was likely born in Patera, a city port on the Mediterranean Sea in Asia Minor, a region that was part of the Roman Empire at the time and today is modern day Turkey. Mm. He was born to wealthy Greek parents who raised him to be a devout Christian and various accounts of his parents' names, again, can't be 100% sure, but they consist of, I'm going to try and say this right. Epiphanius. Epiphanius and Johanna, or Johanna, however you would pronounce it, <laughs> and Theophanes and Nana. We don't know for sure, but those are the accounts I could find of his parents' names. Mm. As a young man, his parents did pass away, and he used his grand inheritance to help the poor and the sick, becoming known for his generosity and his kindness. Now, one of the most famous stories about St. Nicholas tells of how he saved three poor sisters from being sold into slavery by their father. This Yikes. Yes. This is the, this is the Christmas breakfast story we're going to have. It, it has a happy ending. Okay. And this will also correlate with some traditions that in 2022 and in the last couple hundred years, probably, we have celebrated Christmas this way. All relates directly with this story. Now, the father had once been a very wealthy man, but he pilfered it all away due to what is referred to in the story as the plotting and envy of Satan. What in God's name does that mean? Basically, he was a sinner was he going in the context to, of the religion. Was he going to the brothels? Was Maybe, he going to the casinos? Can't be sure. This is just a story. He was, he was, his money was going this did he, way, that way. Did he way, invest in FTX? He probably <laughs> did get in touch with Sam Bankman Freed, Fried, not Freed. Freed. He's definitely yeah. not freed yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> SBF, good old SBF. But the girls did not have enough money because of this for a dowry. So their father planned to sell them, them into slavery instead. Yes. That was a doable thing. Like you could do that. Like back, like you could just be like. We're talking about this is like 480, 380. Well, yeah, I guess right? it's a doable thing. Now, still. for those unaware what a dowry is, do you know what a dowry is, Kim? It's some sort of payment or gift. For uh, to the husband, right? So it is a payment 
or a gift of money, typically, or property that a woman brings to her husband when they get married. And the first place I had ever heard of a dowry was like watching Pride and Prejudice back in the mid 2000s. I heard of it in The Prince of Egypt. There you go. That singing <laughs> section. Oh, the dowry? Uh, what's this? It could do your grandma's eyes. <laughs> yeah, what's heaven's this? eyes. Oh, heaven, not grandma's. Excellent heaven's eyes. DreamWorks movie, highly yeah. underrated. Yeah. You've got Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey both singing this power ballad that I still listen to today well, on what, Spotify. What is, what is the thing that she, So Jen has a whole collection of, of just music from movies she loves, including Pirates of the Caribbean I and do. Harry Potter that she turns on when we drive. So it's mm-hmm. quite hilarious. It's very cinematic. Um, and uh, she has this whole collection of songs, not to get too often topic and uh there's this one section so i don't know if anyone knows this but voldemort was uh the main baddie in prince of egypt so the actor who played voldemort ralph fiends yes is also the voice actor and for ramesses he gets into in the it. cartoon he gets so into it you I want who I called you brother. who I called brother. <laughs> like he totally gets into it and it's very funny but anyway back to back to uh back to not jesus but back to saint nick Yes, but anyway, just just explaining the dowry to those who are unfamiliar with the concept because it's not exactly commonplace today. But in some cultures, the dowry is given by the woman who's getting married, by her family, to the husband or his family as a a tool to use for the young couple to live it's off. A, it's of, like basically. a it's like a starting point. Like if, yes. if like if for example, if you're playing Sims you start with nothing or you start with $50,000 to build your perfect house. Exactly. And at the time, it was typically seen as a way for the woman's family to share in the financial support mm. of the new couple and pro- provide a source of income for them. Uh, without a dowry, at the time, many women were seen as undesirable, no matter how beautiful their face was or lovely their bosom. <laughs> it didn't matter. Yikes. Without a dowry, what's the point, right? I mean... I can see why it wouldn't matter back then. I mean, people were dying like every day. (laughs) They still are, but like at large quantities, like there were crusades and just lots of death. As difficult as things can be for us today, it is probably a better time to live in my personal opinion. Look, in 2022, you might not be getting a dowry, uh, but you definitely have all the social medias to live on. (laughs) Yes. And now today, obviously, dowries are highly controversial, often regulated in some countries still today. They I still, digress. That but, still happens today? Oh, yeah. Holy yeah, crap. that can happen. Interesting. I, I think I think it's common in like arranged marriages situations and stuff like that. But um, it's not completely eradicated from, you know, the cultures of today. But in America, for example, you don't often hear of dowries. So I've got a question, and we're going to jump back to this really quick, but I have a question. How is a dowry any different than a wedding gift? Technically, yeah, how, it is how? the same thing. So then what's Today, the, what's just the IRS watches it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, they do the same than, here in America. I think here it's $15,000 per Yeah, person. so it's the same thing. It's a wedding right. gift. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Okay, cool. Essentially. Anyway, back to dowries. Yes. Uh, so the young ladies whose father gambled pilfered whatever with his money away the undesirables no dowries for these ladies without these dowries an unmarried woman without any other means of employment at the time would likely be on the path to prostitution only fans <laughs> that is a hot take that i kind of a funny one kind of a funny one it's not the same i know it's not it's, it's just, not exactly it the same immediately but popped in my head just kind of funny yeah you know Prostitution, sex work, whatever you yes, want to Yes, queen. It. Keep doing your thing. St. Nicholas, moved by their plight, secretly dropped a bag of gold coins through a window of their house or in some tellings, down the chimney. Mm-hmm. Cl- Why haven't we made a movie about this guy? <laughs> or maybe there is. Uh, I mean, have you not seen Santa Claus 2 with Tim Allen? Yeah, but he's not <laughs> saving three women from prostitution by giving no. them gold coins. No, he's marrying the is principal. Is he saving of his them principal? or is he giving them money for their occupation? Um, no, <laughs> no. So here, let me explain. So yeah. he, so he gives them secretly mm-hmm. this, these bags of gold coins. Yes, proving that the girls will then have their dowries that they needed to be married. And it said he did this privately without like walking to their door and knocking on it and saying, here you go, because he was too humble to publicly offer his services. And he did not want to humiliate the family who was in dire financial straits. Right. Mm -hmm. Or he didn't want them to accept charity 
and feel bad about that. It's also said that when in this version of the story where he drops it down the chimney, that it fell into stockings hanging on the chimney that were drying. And that's how they discovered it when they were putting on their stockings and there was a bag of money in there. So that correlates with why we have stockings hanging from our chimney today. And Santa puts gifts in there. Yeah, isn't that interesting? It's very interesting. It's a it's a very famous story of St. Nicholas. One see, that I've never heard of. Well, I know. It's, I put a reference in the notes. You can't see it. Or obviously, if you're listening, you definitely can't see it. But it is a commonplace depiction in art. You can send Saint me Nicholas. the link and I'll put it in the video. Yeah. So how did St. Nicholas get found out for this act? He did it for the first daughter. Dropped the coins. Then she had her dowry. The father had her married off immediately, and then he did it for the second as well. Same thing there. But the father was then suspicious. He's like, how are these just gold coins showing up and we're able to to do this? So he waited. He waited, lied in wait, probably on a rocking chair in a dark corner. It's a pipe. Yes, just (laughs) waited, just waited. I've been waiting for you. (laughs) He then caught St. Nicholas in the act when he was leaving the bag of coins for the third daughter. The father was reportedly distraught and as St. Nicholas had presumed was, you know, embarrassed. He was very grateful and he asked Nicholas not to tell the public about this, but he was so grateful that he had this help. But while the story of the three daughters cannot obviously be completely verified, it is a very famous story, though. It is said to have taken hold during the fourth century Christianity movement due to the prominent role women played in sharing uh, the Christian message at the time, you know. I think Joan of Arc was at that time. I well, may be wrong it was, about that. Yeah, it was the men were dying everywhere. Well, so. it was supposed to be a story that promotes Saint Nicholas mm-hmm. having, you know, you know, the support of women so they didn't have to go into prostitution due to not having a dowry. So it was a very popular story at the time and continued to be. And it's often in de- Christian devotional artwork and stained glass and paintings all over the place in Europe. And St. Nicholas in a long robe in these depictions usually is presenting the gift to the three daughters in their night clothes. That's mm-hmm. sort of the, the, the picturesque thing that you see in all these related artworks. So yeah, if you ever are in Europe and you are near some sort of painting of St. Nicholas, you may notice that the scene is depicted. It's very popular. Hmm. And it connects directly to sort of our Christmas that traditions is today. Fascinating. Yeah, I had no idea about this. There's also um, another story we'll we'll get into in a bit, but just as a preview, <laughs> he was known for his love for children, and in one story, in another, he saves three boys from being killed and pickled in a barrel. We'll they, talk about that one too. This is another very popular artwork scene of Saint Nicholas. They pickled people. Yeah, I don't know. They, Cure them? They, they were, yeah. Yeah. People were pickled. I, I mean, they did some crazy things back then. I don't know. Have you not been to like those medieval torture No, museums? I have. I just never thought that someone would think of pickling a human being. I don't know. This evil butcher. For consumption? Yeah. We'll, we'll dig it. I'll tell you the story in a bit. We're going to get there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but just yikes. as a little sneak peek into what... What's going on? Second breakfast with your family on Christmas. Yes, that, that's the next story. You the pickled children. Yeah. <laughs> it also talks about how he brings these kids back to life at some point. These stories, along with his reputation for the secret gift giving, have contributed to his image as a protector and friend of children, a la Santa Claus giving gifts to kids. A la all the weird, creepy photos that all of us 90 kid, 90s kids took Sitting with weird, strange men dressed as Santa at the malls for some reason. Yeah. Again, a lot of these stories obviously cannot be verified and they're just sort of stories from what we can tell that have passed along in legend. There is another one uh, in another tale. Can't be verified. St. Nicholas shouted and rebuked the waves while visiting the Holy Land, much like Jesus did. Wait, wait. So the image I got from that is literally him just standing on a beach, yelling at the well, ocean. No. <laughs> he, ah! he was on a ship. He was on a ship that was in a storm okay, in the gotcha. Israeli-Palestinian region. I'm not going to play the semantics game. Whatever. Yeah. Holy land. And he was yelling at the waves and telling them to, you know, stop. And the waves calmed. 
And it was this catastrophic storm that suddenly stopped. And he became then the patron saint of sailors because of this. Okay. And yeah, because he's he's known even today as patron saint of sailors, often mistaken as the patron saint of children. And so that's on a and weird so forth. saint to be. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I mean, we're powering through this. I'm 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 you ready for a commercial break? I mean, we could we could we could do like let's do like a little bit more and then we can do a commercial okay, break. Okay. But I I just think it's I just think a lot of this is probably like parody on not parody but like side adjacent capture of some stories from Jesus is what it seems. Yeah, like. there are some very similar stories. Like they again, both him and Jesus are on boats in the same ocean, calming the ocean. Yeah, you know the story at the of same the same time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The three, the three, the story of the three daughters is a little more believable than you know raising three boys from a pickled barrel back to life. So you have to suspend your disbelief. We'll get to that again. I'm, I'm just I'm jumping ahead. I'm still stuck on pickled barrels, pickled barrel boys. Yeah. PBB <laughs> sounds like a. You want like some a techno dance club? Yeah. Ooh, pickled barrel very boys. Jeffrey Dahmer esque, yeah. but. Returning from his famous trip to the Holy Land, he soon became the Bishop of Myra, which was an ancient Greek town and was uh, known for his great faith and ability to perform miracles there. And the reason he became Bishop, his uncle had held the position when he was born. And then he was, you know, traveling around and somebody else came and took that position, took over. But before he came back from the Holy Land, that Bishop had died. And it is said that upon returning to Myra, Nicholas went immediately to the church to pray. And it just so happens that the city priest had decided that the first priest to enter the church that morning to pray would be made bishop of the city. And so it was. Just like that. I I mean, that might be smoothing it over a little bit but that's, that's like the president the of says. like a bank like getting to the bank early and then saying oh well like, like presidents go to the banks um but like getting to the bank early and saying well the first i'm gonna retire so the first customer that walks in is going to become the new president yes, of the bank. that is literally, literally it. what it's like i mean they did specify it was a priest so he had some qualifications it wasn't just like the poor the poor old <laughs> like the beggar teeth. that walks in and it's like hey you guys got a bathroom <laughs> and it's like <laughs> poor guy riddled in like the black plague oh. at the time <laughs> help me well you're now the bishop so help yourself <laughs> yeah so so he was made bishop of myra and there is a story of saint nicholas sparing another story there's always three people involved in these stories it's Again. like the trinity mm-hmm. yeah Three innocent men were saved by St. Nicholas from brutal execution while he was bishop. It's an attested account. I'll tell the story anyway. Nonetheless, the three men were condemned to death and about to be executed. But St. Nicholas appeared and pushed the executioner's sword out of the way. Just like Pocahontas pushed away in the Disney movie. Oh, gotcha. The very accurate Disney movie. The club from hitting John Smith. Yeah. Because everyone knows Disney has the most historical account of the story of Pocahontas. Disney, all about history. That's their slogan. (laughs) There was sarcasm there, just in case you couldn't catch it. But he then released the men, scorned a juror who had convicted the men for accepting a bribe. Yeah, I don't know. No, after accepting a bribe. Yeah, I, so, yeah. So, apparently- so the juror had accepted a bribe to convict these three innocent men. Is basically, and Saint Nicholas knew he could tell. He's like, "You naughty, naughty juror." Imagine, imagine like the juror and the judge, and like all the people be like, "See the pile of bodies over there? <laughs> like those guys, they did that." And he's like, "Ah, you were you accepted a bribe to get them to be executed." Yeah. Just right. causing chaos. Yeah, he's just, just causing, causing madness. <laughs> but uh, this version of Santa was a badass. And it's just a story, again, but the truth is questionable. I kind of like thinking that this is the inspiration of Santa. This, like, badass dude who runs in and throws an executioner's sword and is, like, with his bare hands wrestling them just, to the ground and unhooking chains and, like, breaking just be he's yeah. just that guy like everywhere like yeah. like like judges and jurors like have to specifically plan their executions at odd times because of him 
like so it used to be at like 4 p.m and now it's at like 2 a.m in the morning because they're afraid he'll just rush in in his red cloak and hat yeah he's just running in he's got like a bag like a sack of presents with him gold coins for all the women he's trying to release how from how do we stop this santa problem he keeps coming and stopping us from killing people who've been convicted of heinous crimes and he just runs in beats the crap out of our executioner and runs away yeah that's hilarious yeah well that's the story again three people well i think it'd be time to take a break it's time to take a break i think it's i'm gonna think about how santa is actually uh <laughs> how santa is actually a protester um <laughs> and we'll and we'll be right back and welcome back we are back from break i have wrestled with the fact that santa would probably have been at some uh recent movements culturally so i think it uh interesting but uh yeah what's what's next we learned that he's stopping executions now what was he tortured that's the question Santa. yes it is speculated like internally no not no no internal torture this would be physical oh, unfortunately gotcha. but it is speculated that under the orders of the infamous empire oh you're gonna have to say this diocletian diocletian yes is that correct the emperor diocletian who ruled from 284 to 300 5 AD. It's so funny saying it without the thousand. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. We're far into the 80s here. But uh, Nicholas was imprisoned and tortured during the great persecution of Christians during this time. It's speculated. Not 100% sure. But also in the same line, it says that he was released due to the orders of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, who ruled from 306 to 337. This is just rumor. But I thought it was interesting to mention that, yes, during his lifetime, there was the great persecution of Christians. But let's get into the pickled baby boys. <laughs> that is just not the sentence I would ever want anyone to say. Right. St. Nicholas was performing miracles left and right, according to lore, and one we mentioned in the opening about the pickled boys. Uh, according to the tale, an evil butcher lured the children to his house where he murdered them and then placed them into a barrel. Very Hansel and Gretel. No? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And St. Nicholas was in town. And I like to think of him as like Gandalf coming to the Shire. Yeah. <laughs> that whole intro to that is so funny. Yeah. Where he, uh, what, Gandalf. No. Gandalf. Oh, that's at the end. The, the intro. When he's like, you're late. A wizard never is late. He arrives precisely when he means to. And then he frowns. And then he goes, <laughs> I missed you, Gandalf. And he like jumps like. <laughs> like laughing hilariously. Yes. We, we, uh, we should yeah. probably insert now that we... Uh, we do know that C. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, that Sir yeah. Ian McKellen played Gandalf and Christopher Lee played guys, Saruman. Guys, look, we have been reminded very thoroughly look, on TikTok and Instagram that we got that wrong. So I, I don't do have time nor mental capacity to remember all these fucking things. Okay, that's part of my German. Okay, that's just all I'm gonna say. You know what I mean? You, you viewer, listener, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know. That and was our bad. And as a, no, a fan of Tolkien myself, I never I, apologize. I, this was out oh, of Tolkien. That's this right. Was you not apologized Tolkin. first in the first episode. First episode, and said I never, never again. This is not Tolkien. This is out of Tolkien realm. This is an event that happened during filming of Tolkien. Okay, so so I can get a pass here because I don't watch all the documentaries. I saw the clip in but passing. See, I do. You watch all the dot. You watched all the film. You watched the entire thing, the like six and a half hour thing. I've of watched the, the director's uncut cut of, direct- of the three Lord of the Rings movies. And then you watched all the interviews with it and all that. Afterwards. No, exactly. but I didn't know what you were talking about at first until afterwards. And everyone's like, that's Christopher Lee. And I'm like, ooh. Well, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Well, we were talking about because in polite Aaron conversation, Sir Ian McKellen polite in the conversation, you wouldn't interrupt me you laugh and remember what i was saying but anyway it's after, all good after i know it's all good i'm my show I just, our show i just show. thought i'd mention that seeing that i was talking about saint nicholas reminded me of gandalf he is like gandalf scenario yeah but he was in town and he suspected that the butcher was up to no good he just knew just like he knew that juror was up to no good he was like <laughs> so he made the sign of the cross which i am not catholic so i don't want to even do it the wrong way or accidentally, but he made a sign of the cross and he resurrected the children on the spot. Now the scientific nature of this story is <laughs> unclear. I, I uh, 
I, back in the Middle Ages, it is widely beloved story of the figure of St. Nicholas, kind of like Snow White today or, or Cinderella. Like that was the stories they shared at the time. Saint or Nicholas. Tom Anderson from MySpace. Yes, there you go. Yeah. St. Nicholas was resurrecting these children. It's depicted again, just like the first story in lots of artwork all over the place with St. Nicholas usually standing above three naked children in a barrel and bringing them back to life, <laughs> which contextually could be construed. However, this is about as innocent as it gets, okay? I'm just saying that is what is usually shown in the art. Don't you dare. <laughs> it's not a... Not a good look. <laughs> Hence, by the way, the mistaken patron saint of children identity. Because mm. there's always children involved in his yeah. artwork. Yeah. In bathtubs. Now again, it feels like we're rush it feels like we're rushing through this, but we're really not. I'm trying to to these are the legends of his life, but we're gonna now talk about his passing because there's a lot going on after he passed, right? Saint Nicholas likely died December sixth, three forty three AD. According to a study of his assumed bones, in the late 1950s, St. Nicholas was likely over 70 years old when he died, 5'6", had a healed broken nose at some point, and a slender build. He also had chronic arthritis in Yikes. his spine and pelvis. Yikes. <laughs> Rough. He definitely he must have... Um, have any Humira or anything or to... Benny the ibuprofen significant others because just drinking tea probably mm, which uh, when you have arthritis in your spine i too like a in combination your pelvis is yeah. what i'm thinking about i'm just thinking like i too like a combination of i like to blend eastern and western medicine let's let's coincide let's coexist but however if i have arthritis in my pelvis i may want more than like mushed roots in a I'm just going to cut my pelvis off. Yikes. Yeah, I'll just be half a person. But he lived till he was 70, like, which is, you know, rather like old no thanks. for 300 AD. That's right? incredibly old. Yeah. So in <clears throat> depictions in Italy, which is, we'll get to why Italy, he has darker skin in the art, likely to emphasize that he was foreign to where he is mostly buried today. You may be Whoa. thinking, I'm kind of confused by the way you said that. And it will make sense shortly. Why? <laughs> Mostly buried. <laughs> Some think that he was originally buried on an island outside of Turkey near his birthplace. Long ago, the island was known as St. Nicholas Island. And now it is called the Island of Boats. Translated in Turkish to, I'm so sorry if I say this wrong, Jamilir Adasi. That is, I'm sure, the most California American yeah. way to say that. Jamilier Adasi, dude. G E M I L E R A D A S I. Okay. There is a rock cut church there on that island that is located at the highest point. And on the building, carved in is, or not carved, painted on is his name. Uh, fourth century is when it was painted on. So many think he was likely originally buried there. Hmm. But he didn't stay there. He was later moved in the mid 7th century to be buried in his cathedral, which was St. Nicholas Church in Myra. We've talked about Myra, that's where he was the bishop. Mm -hmm. And his tome became a site for pilgrimage for Christians. And it stated that his remains of this man would emit a clear liquid akin to myrrh. Do you know what myrrh is? It's frankincense. Frankincense. And myrrh, yeah. And myrrh. yeah, myrrh. It's like a. So a very like valuable a, type. Well, it's, of, it's like a it's like a cologne. Yes, essentially. And it's said that his remains would emit that and give miraculous powers. <sighs> oh, we're not even we're, don't don't look at me like that. We're not even there yet. And it was all sealed into his sarcophagus. So people would visit and it like it's known Definitely. This is when we started hearing about St. Nicholas in writings around this time. He had a burial place. It's just like you open the sarcophagus and he's like just surrounded with bottles of Axe body spray. <laughs> yeah, I want to hope it didn't smell like Axe body spray. That's how we got our newest Axe scent. Bo Axe body spray is like Every time I get a whiff of it, like someone walks by, all it's I can like think of, oh my gosh, I yeah. get thrown back to like middle school. I can I can smell it on like, you know, when you, you know, PE like physical education class yes, and I the do. guys would just like shh. I mean the there's girls still guys too, that, with, like, like Victoria's there's Secret still love guys stuff. that do this at the gym which by the way don't even get me started on that I don't understand it like you're at the gym 
And everyone really smells stinky. The thing is, everyone and you're stinks you're at the going gym. to work out, and you smell delightful. If you're leaving, makes sense. But you walk in smelling like you just sprayed yourself down. It's overpowering. I think. Well, the question I have is what, like, what do you, what would you think, like, that I'm thinking? If I was a guy that walked in and just sprayed myself down, what would go through your mind immediately, right before I start working out? Would it be like, what the. F- fuck was that smell why do what why is he smell like cologne or would you be like oh my god my knight in shining armor you know i don't particularly like the smell of axe body spray so well, i'm talking I'm about not cologne at all. i spray myself down with creed aventus walk into the freaking gym you're so bougie what would you think why did he do that exactly yeah same thing for guys like when a girl walks in smell like whatever they smell like i wouldn't care normally what people do with their smells except when like i'm working out at at a you know Public i'm doing gym, yeah. yeah and and you're just overpowering like this ever since i had covid like years ago at this point my nose has like never been the same so yeah. there's certain smells particularly like cologne and perfume that are just look yeah great. we we walked into our house the other day um and our house smells very christmasy like pine and mm-hmm. cinnamon and all that um, when we're not cooking, sometimes when we cook, it gets a little stinky, but it, it smelled like that. She walked in, we walk, we walked in through the garage and she was like, it smells like patchouli in here. And I was like, yeah. no, it smells like pine needles and cinnamon. For so, some reason, like specific smells like pine, like pine tree doesn't smell the same. That's to me very anymore. interesting. Yeah. yeah no, my anyway, nose smell, it smells the same to me. I digress enough about my nose and it's, it's, you know, long term <laughs> issues. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry. But where were we? We were talking about the mid-century Yeah, move. followed by Axe body move. spray in his sarcophagus. Myrrh yeah. coming from his remains. So the body's not done moving yet, right? It's been likely moved from the island to Myra at this point. But in, I don't even know how to say this, 1087. Would you say 1087? 1087 AD. 1087 AD. Okay. In 1087. I don't, yeah, I was still, like, such a weird thing to say. In 1087 AD, during a tumultuous time of sparring between the Byzantine Empire, the Turks, Greek Christians, it's not exactly the most harmonious time in the Middle East, Southern European uh, it's, it's, killing, it's killing time. Yes. Italian sailors decided to take St. Nicholas's remains from the church. And, well, they didn't take actually all of the bones. They took the main ones, like the big ones, like likely the skull, the the femur. I don't know for sure, but, quote, main ones. And they left all the small ones in his grave. Mm Mm-hmm. Why? Well, we'll find out what they say and what these people say and blah, 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 blah. Historians are calling it a holy robbery the italian thieves were apparently not only afraid of getting caught but they also feared the power that may lie in the remains of saint nicholas and they were very careful with the bones they brought them back to bari italy and there pope urban ii created the basilica di san, Ni- di san nicola i'm sorry again my italian accent is about as california as it gets but i tried in bari and they placed his bones in a tomb beneath that church where they remain today are we sure that it's his bones so mm. so this is the qu- this is a question i have this is a, it's a little side tangent we do this on history of the box why don't we open these things up and carbon date things and make sure they're real and then put them back well on? well 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 we've done generally. we've done those things but you can't really verify that it's him because we don't know for sure that it was him in the first place when they were stolen and mm. did this guy really exist because we only learned about him in the sixth century when he lived in 300 a.d So there's complicated nature to all of this. But what gives? The Eastern Orthodox Christians say that this was blatant theft. You Italian sailors, you showed up to Myra and stole the bones of a a patron saint and took them back to Italy and you kept them, right? But the Bari people say that they actually saved the bones from Turkish invaders who were invading the area at the time. So let's ask the audience at home, what do you think? Wow. <laughs> right that was in. cheesy. <laughs> Tell us, are the bones of St. Nicholas the victim of theft? Or were they just simply saved from a tumultuous time in a dangerous area where they likely would have been incinerated along with a lot of the area anyway? Or... 
does this guy even exist? Exactly. There's three options. Let us know. But Bari does say that Nicholas once visited the area and that he had predicted he would one day be buried there. Says who? I don't know. That's just what they say. I don't know if that's true or not, but... History. History. Apparently, his remains still leak myrrh. Bullshit. Total. No, well, well, it can't well, be watch true. It, no. Watch it, watch it, watch it. You no. don't know. I'm going to be. Scientifically, I'm be, I don't understand all I'm, this. I'm going to be. Cr- uh, no, I don't believe that. According that to is, some. Okay, well, 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 Bari is a harbor town and sits below sea level. And his fluid, this fluid that leaks out of his tomb even today, uh, could be associated with that. But it is collected in vials and available in the gift shop when you visit. Wait a second. No. How do you verify if it's myrrh? I don't know. It's holy liquid. Do you open it and pour it on your hands? What Listen, if it's mercury? Uh, again, not to offend. Obviously, we are. Well, I'm not, not trying to offend Eastern at all. Orthodox I, I, Christian, like, yeah, but, no. uh, but I just yes, don't, that's. Hmm. I don't. I don't hmm. quite understand the <clears throat> the details of that. But yes, you can even today <laughs> visit his grave site speculated to be his final watch it watch place. watch like watch like saint nicholas like one have been real and two like be an alien from another planet his ghost is going to show up to our house on christmas eve and be like i heard you were talking smack <laughs> oh 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 yeah time for saint nicholas to smack you back like no i like i i yeah i, I that's just weird it is a place where lots of people go uh oh yeah and uh, and according to uh, the Italians, someone went back to collect all those small bone fragments that they left behind the first time. Maybe because there is a church in Venice, Italy that reportedly holds 500 bone fragments of St. Nicholas today. And they did do the dating and stuff. And they said that they are likely from the same person that is buried in Bari, but they obviously can't verify that it was specifically this man called St. Nicholas. They just know that they're likely from the same person. But it's also uh, said that his bones were kind of scattered across Europe at one point. The, the the Italian sailors took a tooth here, took a piece here, chipped there. And then in Normandy, France, Ireland, there's actually a stone slab in County Kilkenny, Ireland, that is locally beloved as St. Nick's grave. I don't know if this is the truth. He's just Santa Claus's bones are scattered what? across Europe. The question I have is why? What possessed these individuals to take this individual's bones? Religious relics. And scatter them up to the wind. Religious relics. Yeah, but look, mm-hmm. look, the one thing I can say is at least in some instances of some cultures, they have their big thing in one place mm-hmm. and you do a pilgrimage to that place. Well, wink, right. wink. So it's like, do that. Like you might not well, agree, but like do that, so everyone can be like, hey, here's where it actually is. And oh, all of us pagans who aren't part of your belief system in some instances can go and visit and actually maybe see how cool it is. Well, then you'll like this next part. Oh God! In 2000, the Russian sculptor oh. Gregory Potosky he donated a bronze statue of the saint to the Myra church, the one that he was likely the second burial site that the Italian sailors stole the bones from, right? Or saved the bones from, depending on who you ask. That was a lovely gesture, but in 2005, the mayor of the town replaced it with a very modern day plastic Santa Claus statue with the full red suit and everything so that tourists would recognize to whom the church was honoring. This is actually... (sighs) It's like funny, but not funny if you look at it from different perspectives. So the statue is of, you know, patron St. Nicholas. And then literally the one that it was replaced with is like the most typical American plastic. Coca-Cola. Yes. Russia did not like this. They were very upset. And the government protested. The bronze statue was returned and the plastic Santa was tossed. So today the, the original statue is back in in the square I've, you know you but, know what yeah. gets me as like a thing because i understand what this guy was thinking like if i was the mayor of a town i'd want people to come and like be touristy but you know what i would do it is i'd expect them to be able to read just leave it i mean people look at, when we've gone on our trips when we went to the uh basilica in in spain you know what everyone was doing looking up whoa 
Every single person was looking up. Every single person was reading everything. They were taking photos. I know. Everybody, like, like I, I think I they wish, need to give more credit to foreign tourists. Well, they just need to expect people to be able to appreciate their culture and not, like, and same with us. We need to, like, stop dumbing stuff down. Like, it, it's, people are intelligent. Just let them experience it. And if they don't understand, you can have, like, stuff on the side to help them. But other than that, like, leave it as is. I mean, you always hear about, you know, quote dumb tourists i know american tourists oh like that one mayan girl that decided to walk up the side of a pyramid there's always there's always black sheep in every not mayan girl the tourist it what was it the the tourist that walked up the mayan period pyramid right down in south america um no it was i think in mexico and she climbed the top of is it technical? Oh, I don't Ten, want to say it Tenoch, wrong. Tenoch, Tenoch Yes. Yeah. I think it's outside of Playa de Carmen. She. Cancun area. But yeah. Did she go to jail for that? I don't know. I hope so. Like you hear about things like stuff. You hear about stuff like that. And you're like, how could you be just so or rude? Or like those TikTokers rude that to climb. To the culture. Um, unappreciative of how old some of this stuff is. And like you can't. You should not touch no. these things. Because like. You're just putting all of our germs and well, stuff. Well, it's all over like it. it's like a it's like a, the pe- the TikTokers that climbed up like the the pyramids. Ugh, it's like, don't like, even like, 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 like I get so like get like it's super cool, but like don't do that. Like don't. Do I that. mean, oh, cool, you got a great video, but you no, know. no. On the reverse, I'm not saying like I, I don't think that the like the uh, the reverse reaction of the people screaming for what's her face to be sacrificed while going up the pyramid. Well, no. is appropriate no. either. No. Like I like I think it's just like. Just let those people get in trouble and you continue your day. Right. Like, but I also think the vast majority of people who, for example, visit the the Mayan pyramids. They don't. They, they don't, don't climb it. do that. Why would you so, want to? Yes. Again, I know like when we've been lucky enough to travel to some really, really cool ancient places, most people there, either they have the headset on with it being even translated to them, what everything's going on. There's plaques everywhere you know people are reading and having you know very you know engaging time at places like i that, think the so. thing for me is like when i walk into a play like when we were in um God, what was his name we went to windsor so windsor castle was wild so the same type of thing when we walked into windsor castle i was like i don't want to touch no like and i think anything like i'm afraid the majority air, of people have that logic like, like you just don't touch well, anything well i'm afraid the air i was breathing in that building was going to cost me billions of dollars so I was just kind of like condensing myself. Yeah. And I, I'm, a, I'm not like a really big guy, but I'm a kind of, I'm a sizable dude. Like I'm not small. And like, I was like trying to like stay away from like everything. Yeah. It's quite funny. Yeah. Just, you know, it's a shame that things like this is like, oh, you know, if people are visiting the, the church. They likely do know that St. Nicholas was the inspiration for mm. Santa Claus. Maybe I'm just assuming too much, but there was no reason to put a big plastic Santa there. No, no. So in 2017, Pope Francis lent a gilded ark, which is, you know, like a like a box thing, basically, holding one of the rib bones from the saint, likely the saint, to Moscow. He, he lent it to Moscow, Russia. And over a million people lined up to see it. Okay? Eastern Orthodox Christian, much of Russia. Yeah, and uh, it was then returned to Bari after being loaned to Moscow. But yeah, so it's it's like a very much. I'm trying to think of something that could be akin to this in terms of. It's like not relate. It's not relatable here in the United States. It's just not like there's no, not much. But it's like when people go on pilgrimage, uh, pil- pilgrimages. Thank you to Israel to go to the Western Wall or yeah. or uh, um, Middle East. To go, go to Mecca. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just one of those things that was really really important. Uh, But the Turkish government formally has requested that Italy transfer St. Nicholas's bones, what they think are his bones, back to Turkey in 2009. They requested it formally Mm -hmm. so that his skeletal remains could be placed where he is from, likely the Myra Church. They assert that he was illegally removed in the first place. Did it happen? Did they return it? No. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) But again, in 2017, an archaeological survey was conducted at the Myra Church, and there was a temple found underneath the modern building. Excavation work is being scheduled, done, it's not done, to uh, find any remains that may still be there. Because remember, his bones are scattered to the wind, so they're trying to prove, you know, this is where he he should be. In the centuries after St. Nicholas's death, he was revered as a saint, obviously, patron saint of children, sailors, many other groups. His feast day 
is celebrated still on December 6th by the Church of England, Eastern Orthodox, and he is still celebrated in many countries across the world. And yeah, but, but wait, 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 Santa Claus. Obviously, we talked about the stockings and the this chimney and maybe window, friends with kids stuff. Santa Claus is derived from Dutch traditions of Sinterklaas. I think I'm saying that right. But Dutch settlers in the USA popularized this legend of Sinterklaas, which means St. Nicholas when they came here and Northern European traditions of Christmas at the time, mix them together, bang, you've got Santa Claus and we've only embellished it a little more every year. Yeah. Sense. Yeah. I think the mix with all like the theology and then like the, the actual St. Nick and then like holiday tradition and uh, the winter solstice, all that like mixed together. It's really hard to find uh, like any real, not real, but like any solid like linear lines to and from these things. No, it's sort of uh, as America has been known as being a melting pot. This is just a mixed bag of a bunch of different traditions. You mm -hmm. got Dutch, you have Northern European. Great Britain was really big on, you know, the Noel and they yeah. took the Father Christmas. St. Nicholas is referred to as Father Christmas. It's, mm -hmm. it's all related and it stems back to this man who lived most likely in the 300 AD era and we didn't really get any writing specifically about him until the 7th century. Interesting. So, was he a real man? Most likely. Are his bones in Italy, Bari, Italy? Maybe some of them. They might be in Venice, too. Or Ireland. Or in modern-day Turkey, in the crumbles of it in or, Myra. Or Ohio. I mean, yeah. It's a possibility. You, you it's a small know. one, but Ohio harbors a lot of <laughs> terrible things and that, that could like terrifying things. And that could be one of the terrifying things is somehow the bones made it to Ohio and no one knows how. Yeah. So, so, so speculation, let me be clear, abundant Santa Claus, uh, is originated from a religious figure in the church. Interesting. Well, uh, I think that wraps up the episode. Uh, I do have a few things to say to our viewers and listeners in the, the spirit of the holidays. Uh, Enjoy your time with friends and family. It doesn't matter where Santa Claus comes from because the idea of Christmas is about spending time with those that you love. And if you have nobody, you can reach out to us via Instagram. We will wish you a Merry Christmas and we will we'll join you in holiday cheer. I will have a egg the the egg of nog with some schnapps in it yes, um, and i have a, to hot, join a hot cocoa here but, with look our patron saint right yes, there yes but saint now Nicholas. now is the time to enjoy the holidays do some r and r spend some time with people that you love relax everything's okay we do know that the holidays can be a it's difficult, a difficult time. time yeah so uh if you are one of those people you know keep your head up yep and the new year is right around the corner Yep, everything will be good. But if you like what the episode was, if you like what we talked about, if you like us in any way, and if you're in the holiday spirit, feel free to follow us on Instagram. You can also find our content on YouTube. Uh, a subscription would be greatly appreciated. Normally, normally, we have episodes every week, normally, uh, unless we decide to take a three and a half week long hiatus, mm -hmm. um, which it happens, but uh, 2023 is going to be a big year for Hot B, History Out of the Box. We want to grow this uh, platform and this, uh, this I guess, story. I guess it's a story in some ways because we talk about a lot of historical figures. Yeah. Uh, we want to grow it. So, uh, yeah, we are looking for, uh, you know, good things in 2023. So we wish you, your family, your loved ones, a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Uh, happy all the uh, other holidays I may have missed. Yeah. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Merry Christmas.